welcome to DE Dealmakers, a podcast by Darrow Everett, a full-service business law firm with offices in seven states. I'm your host, Emmanuel subar Litvinoff, a South Florida-based attorney in DE's corporate transaction department. We are thrilled to have Paige Held, the dynamic founder and owner of Yoga Joint, a thriving yoga studio chain in Florida. Paige's journey into entrepreneurship began when she opened her first location in Fort Lauderdale, and since then has expanded to 13 studios across the state with exciting plans for more. Known for her innovative hot yoga fusion style, Paige combines her passion for yoga with a commitment to community and wellness. In this episode, we'll dive into her experiences, exploring how she navigated the challenges of scaling a business, the importance of customer experience, and her unique approach to leadership. Plus, we'll discuss the role of manifestation in her success and her vision for the future of Yoga Joint. So whether you're a seasoned yogi or interested in scaling your business, there's something in this episode for everyone. Paige, thank you so much for being here today. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I love that introduction. <laughs> you, you did it yourself. You have quite an impressive background. And I'd love to hear about the path that led you to establish you know, Yoga Joint. Okay, great. I started Yoga Joint in 2010. I had been teaching yoga in our community, which is Fort Lauderdale, since I was 19. So I had been teaching for already about a little over a decade. And I was really antsy in a lot of different areas of my life. And yoga helped to calm some of that angst. But the one thing yoga didn't help me calm was that desire to want more growth and the desire to want to open up my own business. I come from entrepreneurs and I understand the work ethic that it takes to own your own business. And I decided in my early thirties, I had two young children. I decided to just go head first and make my dream a reality and open up my first location. That was in 2010. And 14 years later, we're here. We have 13 locations. We are selling franchises left and right. And we are op opening corporate stores right now as well. We just started raising capital for our corporate stores in a different direction than we had before. Before we had traditional loans, we went to banks. We did what most entrepreneurs do, sign your life away and pay a ton of money and interest. And now we're able to stop the dilution process because we are raising outside capital. And this outside capital has come from all of our clientele. So it's a little bit unorthodox, but we have an amazing program to offer people to be an investor where Yoga Join is 51% and they can be 49%. It's in $100,000 increments. So we have them diversified. So it's a better way for them because if God forbid they put all their money, let's say they had $500,000 liquidity that they wanted to offer our business instead of us taking that for one location, which hopefully does well, if God forbid it didn't, they could be more diversified. So it's just a safer way. It's a safer approach for us. It's a safer approach for them. They have the ability to make their money back within the first three years. We have proof of concept and it's exciting because it's not just a yoga business and a fitness brand that people love, but it's an opportunity for people to make some great income when they wouldn't have had this opportunity if it wasn't for yoga joints. So I'm really excited to see what the future holds. I, ha I have full confidence in us and I'm excited about that path. I I'm excited for you guys as somebody who is, uh, a member of the downtown location. You guys have something really incredible going. And uh, I, I love to see the customer experience and just you as an entrepreneur, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and you hit the nail on the head, that work ethic and that vision and that dream is what really drives a lot of entrepreneurs to work day in and day out and on, on what they want to accomplish and to scale their business. And that's exactly what you're doing. And so, you know, scaling requires a lot of operational efficiency. So I'd love to understand kind of what systems and processes you have in place to ensure consistency and quality across all the different studios, especially as you get into the franchise world. 
Well, thank you for saying that. We didn't always have such consistency and that's one of our core values. We understand that things are going to come up and there's going to be hiccups in the road. And we have so many hiccups. I joked with you when we were doing the pre-interview, like you had mentioned that the podcast was, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. And I was like, girl, (laughs) I could be on this podcast for hours telling your listeners Mm -hmm. about our hiccups and headaches that we have gone through. But that's for another time. We have had such great people on our side, which has made all the difference for our success. I truly believe that people work for people. And I've been so blessed to have the greatest partners and for me to be on the front lines where I think a lot of other people give so much power to their CEO, their CFO, their CBO, their CMO, they're blah, blah, blah. And my business partners and I decided to take the hats of these. So my business partner is the CEO. My other business partner is the CFO and I'm the CBO. So we've taken the hats on so we can have our finger on the pulse and be able to manage. There is a difference between micromanaging and managing. And I think I'm really good at managing and not micromanaging. I have a team under me. That team has a team under them. We have our best practices because of all the mistakes we have made. We have our best practices now and we just finalized. Now we've been in business 14 years. We just finalized our operational manual. We just, I'm telling you this, like right now, it was last week. Like we are just finalizing where somebody who works for me, she's calling me and she's like, listen, we're literally going to print. We're a hundred percent. We've changed this thing a hundred times. Like we're a hundred percent. I'm like, no, we're not a hundred (laughs) percent, but we're a hundred percent for where we are today. Mm -hmm. And one of my best qualities is I am great with change. I Mm -hmm. am definitely not uber regimented. I thrive on consistency in my own life, as far as my morning routines, as far as my evening routines, as far as how I am with my children. However, I'm not, I'm good with change. And so I'm a Gemini and they say that like, we're the the fish and the double and the twins. And I really think that's behooved me because I go with the punches. If something happens, I'm like, all right, we're here. Let's just move forward. I can compartmentalize things really well. I don't know. My therapist tells me that might come back to haunt me when I'm, you know, in my 50s and 60s. But for now, in my mid 40s, it's worked. So we're just going to go with it. I truly believe that yoga and the practice of yoga and the being in the now every day for 60 minutes has been such a gift from the universe. Because if I didn't have that to fall back on, I'm sure all that angst of being an entrepreneur and never feeling like things are good enough and all always wanting more and more and more and that constant drive that we feel. I think most entrepreneurs that I know and for myself, I can speak to about this is that we we're always like on caffeine, but we're not. It's just like this constant like itch inside of us. And I'm so grateful for yoga because it's pushed me into foundation and stability. So I find policies, procedures, SOPs, best practices. I have all these things in place, but then if something goes wrong, I can tear up that part of the manual and redo it. It drives my team insane. But for me, it's the only way to be because if you cannot pivot when you need to, you're going to sink. You're going to drown. So how do you attract and retain top talent in your studios, especially when expanding to new locations? Yes. So I've always been so lucky with this. I'm not sure if you would call it the law of attraction or manifestation. Really, I think it's whatever you resonate with. I think it's the law of attraction. I've always attracted the best people. And even when things didn't work out, there was always such a great lesson for me. And typically the lesson was I didn't trust my gut in the beginning. And when I went away from that just core feeling that this person wasn't going to be right, but they had a great resume and they had a great following and a great social media presence. And that means something in this day and age. So I put those feelings aside and it came back and 
didn't behoove me. And I now really try to lead with that. I try to listen to that voice inside because it always guides you. But when you're a young entrepreneur, you are so desperate for making money and putting your name on the map and getting your marks and you are going so many miles per hour and you're not sleeping and you're dedicating so much to your craft and your business that you do overlook these details like listening to your gut. And if I could go back in time, I would, well, you know, I guess if you you go back in time, like maybe you'd make different decisions. But if I could go back, I would love to say to that younger entrepreneur, listen to your gut because you're going to turn around and you're going to be right. And don't try to people please even though everybody loves this person, this person's not right for yoga joint. And I've only had a few of those. So knock on wood, I've been really lucky to attract some incredible talent and some incredible people on our corporate team. I work with mainly women. My business partners are men, but everybody else, my HR department, my director of ops, the people under her, we have some amazing, fabulous male teachers, but it's been amazing to work with as many women as I have. Mm -hmm. And most of the people that I work with day to day have been with me since I started. So that's also really cool. Yeah. To see. And when we started, we we couldn't, we paid peanuts. So to see that they've stayed with me, most of them are mothers. Our kids have been raised together, which is really cool. They've seen the vision. I, I've had a few that have left and it was difficult, but it it's all been pretty, that part of the business has been the pretty even keeled part of it. I'd love to kind of know what's next for Yoga Joint. Are there any new like projects, expansions or anything you're particularly excited about? Yes. So we just raised $12.5 million for the expansion for the JVs. And then we just got a uh, $5 million loan to put everything under one umbrella and clear out some of our COVID debt with some stuff that the government had given us to, to float us for a little bit. So we're finally out of space where we're kind of getting even and we're feeling really good about that. We are going to be opening up more corporate locations and more franchises. We're moving out of South Florida into Jacksonville, into Orlando and into Tampa. We're opening in Orlando in December. So it's right around the corner. And we're opening in Jacksonville next. And then, which is exciting because I have family in North Florida and St. Augustine area. So I'm excited about that. I have friends and family there. My family moved from St. Augustine when I was young, but I never lived there. So, but I have a brother there still. I have friends from high school there still. So I have a ton of people there, which is exciting because I'll be able to go back and forth. Jacksonville is not that far from St. Augustine. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to going out of South Florida because in South Florida, everybody knows us. So I want to prove to myself that I can do this outside of South Florida, which I know I will. So I'm really looking forward to having that kind of like street cred, like, yeah, I did this. I did this. So I'm looking forward to that. So we're just expanding one studio at a time. That's wonderful. And I mean, the loan itself speaks a lot to the proof of concept and to your vision and to the expansions. And so are you focusing more on the franchise component or corporate components or a nice mix of both? We're focused more on the corporate side of that JV partnership that we're doing. The franchise, we are going to be a little bit more picky and slower just because of the nature of franchise businesses. My business partner was in franchises and he's been burned and I've heard horror stories. But then on the other hand, I have friends that are in, that are actually a franchisee and they have great things to say about it. So I want to figure that out for myself because we can listen to people's advice all day, but until we feel that for ourselves, we'll never know. So our path is to open up more corporate stores and raise money for that and then continue to slowly hand pick where we're going to go and who we're going to franchise with. So we're not in any rush with the franchises. We've only sold eight and we're going to 
focus on those. We have 1,100 people like knocking down our door. So we've, out of 1,100, we've chosen eight. And we're going to do that in South Florida, North Florida, and like Tampa and, you know, like UCF area, Orlando, and kind of Central Florida-ish, and then go from there. So we're going to get roots there and then take our time and see if we can build. It sounds like you've definitely done your target market research. Yes. And kind of with your experience of both strategies. Yes. Kind of taking it from here. And so you, in a sense, almost answered my next question, but I'd love to kind of see if there's anything you'd like to add about where you see Yoga Joint in the next five to 10 years and what are some other long-term goals for the business? So five to 10 years, I would love to be in Texas, Georgia. I'd love to be in New York City. Manhattan is one of my favorite places in the world. My daughter and I go visit often and we just love it. I've been taking her there since she was little. She's our youngest of four. And I've just always loved it. My business partner also has friends and family in the city and he would love to be there. So we are looking now actually for that because the way it works, real estate there is very different than here. So people make deals that many years before knowing that as soon as that lease is out, they already have an idea if they're going to st stay or go. So you already have to kind of talk because the space is, is it's New York is, is high and massive, but real estate is sort of few and far between. So we've been looking there. That is a big dream of ours and a goal. So we're thinking Texas, we're thinking Georgia, we're thinking New York, and then that's like five years and then 10 years, maybe, maybe it would be everywhere. Yeah, that, that would be great. I like that. Yeah, New York is a different animal. We have a New York office and I, I hear about the real estate deals happening there and people jump on those leases at least five years before you it's know, wild. something is terminating. It's wild. So I just had a friend of mine ask me, are you open in New York? Because she had seen on my social media that I had been going there. And I was like, three, three years down the line, she was like, what? Why are you there now? I'm like, oh, you have no idea, girl. Yeah. <laughs> like it's... Yeah. You have to understand who's not renewing their lease and try to yes. get in before somebody yes. else does. Yes. And there's a, since COVID, unfortunately, there is a lot of space, but it's, of course, nothing that I love. So the spaces that I love are, are occupied right now. So we're, we're patient. And also I just want to make sure that I have that infrastructure when I go to Jacksonville, when I go to Orlando, when I go to Tampa, because although that is outside of where I am, it's not, it's still, I can get my car and drive there. Yeah. So it's where New York, it's not as easy. Exactly. So yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, you know, close this up with one question that we always ask our guests is based on your experiences, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs? You did kind of answer this already, but I'd love to see if there's anything you would add as well. I've had this question before, so I know how to answer it. I would say to pay attention to the details. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs are up in the clouds and we have the vision but the details get a little fuzzy for our type of way we work and our brain functioning. So I would say to pay attention to the details because the desire is there and entrepreneurs do not lack work ethic and we do not lack visionary vision and we do not lack motivation, but we do lack paying attention to the small fine print and in contracts, know what you're signing, understand what you're signing, have good lawyers, have good people by your side. Don't trust everybody. Listen to your gut and really pay attention to the details. I absolutely love that advice. I think that's so imperative, especially for young entrepreneurs. You touched upon this earlier about uh, dilution, things like that. A lot of entrepreneurs are desperate, are eager, want to move forward quickly and are, you know, willing to give up a lot of, of portions of their equity in their business and everything they built it takes a lot of time sometimes to earn that back, to buy it back, to, yes. to get your voice reheard, but uh, that, that paying attention to details and they don't really realize what they signed away. They're just no. seeing a sum of money come to them and they're just like, okay, we'll figure this out later yeah. and let's, let's move forward. So yeah. I love that advice. I think it's huge for young entrepreneurs. Yeah. 
Same. Wonderful. Well, Paige, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I always love to talk about Yoga Joy, so anytime. Mm-hmm.